want to show you guys a little PR haul. This is arguably the most fun part of content creation. Getting on some brands PR list is definitely like a pinch me moment. And so basically PR is when you receive just like gifts from brands with no obligations to post. They just want to send it to you just for funsies. They like seeing your content and the more you post, obviously the more brands are gonna see you. So I get this question a lot, is how I get on these PR lists, like YSL, Gisu, Rare Beauty, Kiehl's, Prada. My two answers is one, you need to post. A brand isn't gonna see you if you are not posting on any platform. How would a brand find you if you're not posting content? My second answer is if you want beauty related content like makeup, make makeup get ready with me. Try out makeup and film it. Like if you wanna be sent clothes for free, make fashion related content, make outfit of the days, make spring favorite outfits, make summer favorite outfits. You wanna get onto wellness PR lists or you wanna get sent active wear, post wellness related content. Post your gym routine, post your nighttime routine, post your morning routine and more lifestyle wellness brands will reach out to you. So it's not rocket science. You just need to start posting, get yourself out on the internet so brands can actually see you. If you want products from a specific niche, you should probably start posting more content related to that niche, if that makes sense. It's essentially how I got on these PR lists. I post a lot of fashion, beauty, and overall lifestyle content. And that's like three big niches. So I have a pretty big chance of getting reached out to by these brands. Starting with Miss Rare Beauty. This packaging is absolutely insane. And it opens up. <gasps> this is the new Soft Pinch Powder Blush Collection that just dropped at Sephora. Definitely a pinch me moment because we all grew up watching Miss Selena Gomez in Wizards Waverly Place on Disney Channel. So the fact that I just get her makeup is just absolutely insane. Next, we have a PR package from Gisu. Stop. This is the new collection. Oh my gosh. These are the new tinted honey infused lip oils. Wow. Okay, their PR team is absolutely killing it. Gosh, look how beautiful. So although this is PR and I have no obligation to post, I'm already thinking about making a video of trying out all these lip oils. I think it'd just be fun, organic content that I want on my page. So I'll definitely film something cutie with these. Thank you, Gisu. But I have two mystery boxes. Oh my gosh. Miss YSL. Mm. This perfume is to die for. They've sent me so many, so I'm definitely gonna put it in my like giveaway pile or to give it to one of my friends. But thank you, Miss YSL. And our last box. Ah, uh, okay. So this is not PR. This is for my monthly collaboration with Revolve. They basically give me a clothing credit per month that I get to choose from in exchange for two TikToks a month. So this is part of my order and it's just a cute little skirt. For sure need to make a video like styling the pieces I request. And I requested this cute like spring skirt that I'm really excited about. After I open PR, I usually like to take pictures of the things that I got and upload it to my story, just to kind of show like an appreciation for the brand and that I'm just very thankful for all the PR they sent me. So I'm gonna take some pics really quick. I wanna film a few beauty related videos. And so I always film on my phone for short form. This is called a sticky grippy or there's some called Opto Buddies that you, I'm sure you've heard of on TikTok where this can stick to nearly any window or mirror. It does not stick to walls. I learned that the hard way. I dropped my phone so many times, but it only sticks to windows or mirrors. I'm just gonna stick it like right here. You can literally just move it wherever you want. It's way easier than a tripod as well, so. I just like to do it like that. And the lighting is to die for right here. So I'm gonna film right here. I feel like we're doing a little inception moment. Now I'm gonna film the Gisu lippies because I really wanna try them on, but also film them. I think that'd be cute content, but I'm gonna change my shirt so that it just doesn't look like, you know, repetitive with the same outfit. just dragged my bed comforter kind of towards the sun so I could get a better shot of these. But look how beautiful these are. Are you kidding me? Sometimes you have to do what you gotta do to make it work because it was too dark over there and I did not like how these looked like on just the carpet. So you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> this is the outfit I'm gonna shoot with for Revolve. And again, I'm gonna use my sticky grippy to put it onto my mirror. Just like this. And that's basically how I film these outfit TikToks. I 
pretty much wrapped up my filming. I didn't have a lot of things filmed today and I honestly didn't want to pack my day in just for the sake of this video. While we're seated here, I wanted to show you guys the equipment that I use. It's the camera that I'm filming on now and it's pretty much the camera that I pick up every single time I vlog. It's the Canon PowerShot Mark G7X2. I think it's what it's called. It's a very great beginner camera being that it has the viewfinder, it's really easy to use and it has the autofocus feature. It has everything that you need. This camera also takes the best digital pics ever. It's so good and so crisp. But yeah, this is my primary camera. This is a DJI Action 4 camera. Camera. literally the best equipment I've invested in so far. You have two viewfinders. You have this one up here and then you have a bigger one in the back. And I'm just gonna show you the quality. This camera shoots in 4K and you can really tell the difference. You can definitely tell that it's in 4K. And I love that no matter what the lighting is, I can still get a decent shot. This guy is definitely worth the investment. I bring this everywhere. My next piece of equipment that I've been absolutely loving on my on-the-go shots is this little tripod. So this is a suction cup tripod. You can put it on the front windshield or as I like to do it as you've been seeing in my previous vlogs, I like to stick it to the roof of the Tesla because it's a glass surface and I just have to screw the bottom of the Canon camera. It's also fun too if you want to put your camera up on the windshield and talk to it while you're driving. I love that. It just feels like you have like a bestie with you in the car and it really just feels natural and above all it is very safe. You don't feel like it's interfering with any of the view when you are driving. Safety is the number one priority with buying a rig like this. It gives me so much anxiety when I see other creators having like one hand on the wheel, the other hand with their camera trying to vlog and just like looking down. Don't do that. I get you're trying to get the content, but above all, please be safe. Sorry for my TED talk, but this is a very good piece to invest in. And then lastly, my tripods. They are nothing special. They're literally just from Amazon. My big one is my Pride and Joy though. I use it every single time I film, either if I'm filming with my phone, it has an attachment to kind of just have a normal iPhone tripod. And then the top screws off so that you can put your Canon onto it. I also have a smaller tripod for those shots in the morning where I want to do skincare or just anywhere where I don't need a big tripod with me, I will use that one. All this equipment, I highly, highly recommend and you literally can see that I use it in every single vlog. So definitely worth the investment. Now I'm gonna move on to probably the most boring part of content creation, which is outbounds, inbounds, and answering emails. So when I say outbound, it means like me pitching myself to brands to work with me. Outbounds are very time consuming and exhausting because you're basically pitching yourself to a bunch of brands, whether it be 20 at a time, 50 at a time, etc. My goal per week is to pitch a hundred brands. That means emailing a hundred brands asking if they would like to work with me. It's not every day that you get an email from a brand asking to do work. It's also just really bad to rely on brands reaching out to you for your source of income. Like you need to have that dog and you need to reach out to brands that you want to work with because the worst that they can say is no. And you kind of just have to like let go of the ego part of it. Like, dang, I'm getting rejected because that's going to happen. This is the business side of content and it's not always gonna be like a brand deal every single time. The best example of that is this previous hotel club I had in LA. I pitched 20 hotels in LA. I received like 15 no's right off the bat. I received some no answer. All it took was one hotel to give me a chance and say yes. And then from there, you just feel like on top of the world. I was like screaming, jumping up and down in my office when they responded saying yes, they wanted to work with me. And it was worth all that headache and rejection because I got to have a weekend comped and I got to bring my boyfriend. I got to have dinner comped. I got to have free valet all weekend. And you know, parking is an issue in LA. I had $100 food and beverage credit for room service. And we were just like pampered the entire weekend. And it was in one of my Q1 goals to land a hotel collaboration. And so I'm so glad I just stuck it out and just kind of like let go of my pride and the ego part of it of the feeling of rejection because we're gonna get rejected every single day and that's part of any type of business. So that is my case study. Pitch yourself, all it takes is one yes for you to get that under your belt and to give you that confidence to keep going. And so being that I just wrapped up my first hotel collab, I'm gonna start pitching today to Seattle hotels. We're going to a wedding in a town like kind of near Seattle, but I wanna visit Seattle to visit my best friend Gabby, which was the girly that you saw earlier on the vlog. And so basically all I did was Google search hotels in Seattle. So far I came down down with a list of 17 boutique hotels that I want to pitch to and also use my experience in LA to kind of give leverage and to kind of give my portfolio that I have done a hotel club before. So I have my list. I'm going to start copy pasting my hotel template into the emails and just send them out. No expectations. We just need to get these outbounds out.
Okay, I just finished some outbounds and now I wanna kinda get into some more frequently asked questions. I'm gonna kinda group these next few questions into one topic, which is how I plan out my content, how do I think of content to film, and how do I concept my content? Like, how do I know which shots to take, B-roll, etc. kinda just like sticking to a script. And so the way I think of content is just by honestly either consumption or just ideas that I get. So first thing is how I think of content to film. I literally just get inspo from what I consume on a daily basis. Like whether I'm watching a YouTube video, I will kind of take mental notes or I'll just put in my notes of like, hey, this is like a pretty good idea of what I want to film. I really utilize the notes app. I have a YouTube content kind of like list for things that come up that I definitely want to film. So this is where I just kind of brain up. So these are just things that I've thought of and I want to start concepting if I want to actually do them. So that's how I think of content. I literally, I just anything that I consume that I think would be fun to film in like my particular way and my editing style, my filming style, um, I will just brainstorm from there. I'm really gonna show you my notes app and kind of my process of thinking about content to film as well as concepting it, so like breaking down what I wanna show in my video and kind of like building a shots list. This is a recent note about the spring reset vlog. I knew I was filming on a Monday, so I always put like the day that I'm filming, so I'm kind of just staying on a schedule. And I'll list out like the times of the day where I know I have an obligation. And then from there, I will build the shots list. So I knew that on Monday, I usually wake up at 7 a.m. for Pilates. And so then I just listed out shots that I wanted to make sure that I took with my camera. I typically always show like my morning routine in my vlog. So my morning hygiene, getting out of bed, my alarm. And then at Pilates, I always make sure to list out shots that I want, like the locker room shot at the Pilates session, getting in the Tesla. Anything that doesn't have like a time obligation, I kind of just bullet point it because I don't want to pressure myself to stick to a timeline. That'll just like make me a little overstimulated. First thing I wanted to do was show that I plugged into the charger, do a little debrief, do my little charge chat. And this isn't necessarily scripting. I just like to have an overall guideline of what I wanna say, because if I don't do that, I will just yap or I just won't have enough to talk about. It just kinda keeps the video on track. So I knew that I wanted to talk about that today was spring reset, it's a new season, blah, blah, blah. And then I wanted to also show that I was running errands so I went to Costco, I cleaned the house, showered, freshened up, made coffee, breakfast, and then we get into the actual reset. So these are the shots that I wanna take. I try not to get too in depth with my shots list because again, I'll just get overstimulated. If we wanted to make this even more complex, I could add on shots list to these main shots list. So wash bedding. You guys have seen me put my little action camera in the washer. It's kind of just story tell what I'm doing. So we could do wash bedding, we can do a sh another shot where camera in the washer you can also show me pressing the button you can show yourself loading the soap and then we can end that main shot by showing the clothes spinning i guess but that's an example of just kind of expanding that shots list and it's just also satisfying to make sure you hit all these shots so that way you don't miss anything so yeah that is how i concept my content and kind of plan out what I want to show in each vlog. Regarding how I plan out my content, I go through many different phases of using Notion or just my Google Calendar. I used to use Notion for a while, but I kind of just like didn't like it because it didn't sync up with my calendars properly. So now I just use my Google Calendar where I literally just put the days where I am filming. So today, obviously filming content creator day of my life. And then I also put the day that I'm uploading. So I'm uploading this on Sunday the 7th. I'm trying to do a better job of filming way more in advance. In a perfect world, I would have liked to film this video two weeks ago. So that way I'm not like pressed for time with my editing process. Editing takes the longest time out of this entire content process. So I need to do a better job of filming way beforehand, concepting way beforehand. But yeah, not me showing what's coming up. I still wanna think of more ideas for this month because my goal is to post twice a week and I wanna just be consistent and show up for everyone that wants to keep watching. So that is how I think of content, that's how I concept my content, and that's how I plan out my content. If you have an iPhone, you have the notes app for free. If you have a Gmail, you have access to your Google Drive and you can have your little Google Calendar. And the second thing I wanted to talk about was my editing process. I get a lot of questions on how I edit, how I found my editing style, and what softwares I use. So I use Final Cut Pro to edit all of my YouTube videos. So this is what it looks like 
I did start out with iMovie as literally every YouTuber did. I feel like it's just the best because it's free. But then I did decide to upgrade and I'm really glad that I did because I really love the features that Final Cut has. Yeah, that's the software I use to edit my YouTube videos. I'll show you guys how I edit all my short form content, which is TikTok content and Instagram Reels content. So I use the app Vlow. I used to use CapCut, but for whatever reason, CapCut started playing with me and it would glitch out way too much to the point where it made my editing process like 10 times longer. And so I just didn't love the issues with it. I decided to move on to Vlow, which I heard really good things about. It is a paid subscription. I think I pay 25 a year. So being that we filmed earlier today, I'm gonna actually edit one of those videos and show you guys. Let's do the Gisu one. So I'm just gonna import all the footage that I want. And then you want to make sure your aspect ratio is 916. That is the typical standard for all short form. And then content mode, you want to fill the screen. So then press create project. Zoom in to make your clips a little bit shorter so you can see it more. Or I like to zoom in so I can see literally every second of the clip to do the rough cut process. So I'm just going to like scrub through. I'm going to press split. And I pretty much just like delete any footage I don't think will make the cut. She's glowing. Why was my hair actually a little bit of a mess? It's fine. So I'm basically just like chopping this up. It's not rocket science. It's just you develop your editing style over time. I feel like I need some blue light glasses. I'm manifesting a collab with blue light glasses because I'm on my screen so much, dude. Like it's actually... Concerning. So now we limit it down to 25 seconds. Now we can export, so just top right hand corner, do high resolution, 30 frames per second. I don't know what video codec means, so I just keep it at whatever it's at. Um, and since I filmed in 4K, it will export in 4K. So let's export. Amazing. So now let's go into TikTok. Um, I usually like to go into my saved sounds. Have you guys listened to the Lady Killers too? So freaking good. Lady Killers literally raised me in high school. And for them to release the second one, no words. So I'm gonna use this one because it's kind of trending right now. This filter is very 2016-esque. We're gonna take off the filter. Upload. I'm gonna mute it though because I don't want my video to get copyrighted on YouTube. <laughs> And then being that I want the sound of me like doing some ASMR stuff, I'm just gonna go to volume and really increase original sound. Okay, and then I'll add just like a text. Slade. That was a very in-depth tutorial. I really hope you guys enjoyed that. I usually don't edit during the day because it kind of makes me tired and now I'm tired. So I really had to push through it with that. But yeah, that is how I edit my short form. I'm briefly interrupting because this is a different day. I'm wearing the same sweater though, but I wanted to address this because I got quite a bit of questions about this and it is how I film at Pilates. So when I first started out going to Pilates, I would film on my little Insta360 Go and I would just kind of prop it up and just be somewhat discreet and try to make it just focus solely on me because I don't want to make other people feel uncomfortable. My rule of thumb is that if I'm in like an enclosed area, like a room or a store and there's cameras above like recording us, I also feel that I can record as well. I can bring my camera in, but I know that some places are not like that. Some places will be really strict about it and tell you that there's absolutely no recording. So in times like that, I try to be as respectful as I can. And if they tell me that I can't record, then obviously I won't, but it's free marketing. So I don't know why they wouldn't. I know that it can be kind of like uncomfy for other people. So I try to be as respectful as possible. And if someone kind of feels uncomfy, like they can just tell me and I'll just move my camera or just turn it off. Um, luckily, I haven't run into any issues like that, but now I actually have a free membership with my Pilates studio in exchange for content every month for them to just use on their socials to promote their business. This was after like maybe three months of me paying for class pass to attend their classes. And then one day I just pitched to them. I was like, hey, do you work with influencers or content creators? I'd love to make some content for you in exchange for a membership. However, if they want to run ads on my content, I do charge that, but we kind of just like wrote up a deal, signed the contract, and that's how I'm able to go to Pilates for free, which is just insane. And that's also why I feel even more comfortable because we are contracted to do work together, so. But I actually have three videos due today 
for the Pilates studio so I figured that we could edit that together. I film all my Pilates content on my action camera so I'm just going to take out the SD card. It's literally the tiniest SD card ever. And so I just plug it into this SD card reader. It should look something like this. And you just slide it in there and there you go. And I'm gonna move you to my screen now so we can edit this together. Make a new project and I'll name this it's April. We want it in vertical format. We want to do 1080 by 1920 at 30 frames per second because that is how the action camera films. It films in 4K. So we want to make sure those settings are good. So now we're going to import the footage from DJI. Super straightforward being that it's SD card based. So let's... Okay, so I think I want to do this for favorite upper body moves and I like to mute it immediately. And we need to rotate this to... 30 minutes later, we finally have three videos made for the Pilates studio and I'm just gonna email it to the manager and that is my deliverables for the month. Now I'm gonna move on and do a little YouTube thumbnail for tomorrow's upload. My LA vlog is pretty much already done. So I'm just gonna do a screen recording and basically let the process just talk for itself. So for today's thumbnail, I really wanna experiment with Canva. I primarily make all my thumbnails in Final Cut Pro just because it's easier, I have all the footage in there. I have just like things I can screenshot to make my thumbnail. I'm really trying to work on my thumbnails. I just want them to be cuter and just more enticing to click on for the viewer. So Canva has a lot of selection, which is great. And it seems like this is pretty straightforward. My friend Gabby actually sent me this to kind of just like play around with. So we're just gonna play around with. I just have the biggest creative block when it comes to thumbnails. Cause like after a long session of editing, I just do not want to do any more work with it. So we're trying to get better at that. I'm working on it. That was literally so much fun. I didn't realize I was missing out so much on Canva. If you have Canva Pro, do not sleep. On making thumbnails in Canva. Um, but yeah, I think those are my most frequently asked questions. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them down below. I hope I just didn't yap your ears off way too much, but there's just so much that goes along with this content creation process, and it's just a lot of learning every single day of what works, what doesn't, like different ideas, getting inspo from other creators. I feel like there's never a solid process to do something in content. Like you're always kind of refining it. I hope you guys had a great time just kind of tagging along and seeing like the behind the scenes of setting up my camera and having this like filming inception <laughs> sort of thing going on. There's a lot that goes into it that you don't quite see. So it's kind of exhausting just having to like capture all of that, but I know that it was worth it. And I hope that helps you with your content creation journey if you want to start. It's so much fun. And I really hope this inspires you to either take it seriously or to do it on the side. I really hope you guys like this video and all of my tips and tricks. If you did, I would love for you to subscribe and hang around for a little while longer. Give this video a like and thank you guys so much for watching. Love you, bye.